So I wanted to make this video because I have always been silent about every single time that I am accused of something or every time someone attacks me or tries to use my name. I've always been silent and handled it um, professionally through my attorneys or, you know, privately. Uh, however, to say the least, I'm over it. I'm tired of being attacked and not standing up for myself. Um, so I'm making this video not only to clear uh, these accusations, but to give some background into um, the situation. And considering that this is my official statement regarding my former client, Danielle Cohn. Um, so to start, I guess I'd like to give some background on everything that I have done for Danielle um, and her family. And it's rather shocking, I suppose. Um, I spent about $50,000 on them, paying for her birthday dinner at BOA, um, for an entire table, um, paying for party buses. I paid for the cars in Florida when they moved from Florida back to LA. I heavily discounted all the music videos that I produced for her, which I have yet to been paid for. Um, and I went above and beyond for Danielle. Um, I did all her distribution for her music videos on platforms and partners that, that she has never worked with before, such as her Vivo channel, Apple Music, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and really kind of helped her elevate her music videos and do what she wanted to do. Um, you know, I went, this girl and I were, were like family for a while. Um, we went to Disney World together. Um, we went on multiple dinners in LA, um, all of which I paid for um, and many more things I shouldn't have had to pay for. Jen, for example, had asked me to get me a Suburban in LA, so I paid for the Suburban so that they could put packages in it and such to move it back to LA. I had staff helping pack up their house for them. I had really been there with them um, through a lot. Um, but to preface that, I had started working with Danielle because I invited her to a, I've known Danielle for years, minus. I mean, I've known Danielle for, since she was a very young child um, and most of my career in this industry, um, you know, I had invited her to a yacht party event in uh, Miami area and, you know, we hit it off. It had been a while since we've seen each other, so we were just having a good time, talking business. Mikey Tua actually invited me to their Florida house for a while, so I stayed there uh, and we started filming a documentary um, called Obsessed, as well as working on a couple other projects. Um, and long story short, I eventually go back to Los Angeles. We had started filming the documentary. Um, after getting to know Danielle and Jen at a much closer level, I stopped filming this documentary um, because it got really, really dark and scary and I felt uncomfortable. Um, so you know, Danielle had asked me to come to their Los Angeles house several times, um, even when I didn't really like want to, I stayed there because I didn't know what the situation was or, you know, I wanted to be helpful. So as I have spent time with, with Jen and Danielle, I've gotten to learn their family, their family dynamic, and much more information that I did not know previously. Um, and, you know, it, it started to be uh, very uncomfortable for me watching Jen, um, her mother, taking advantage of her. Danielle had told me at one point she had $300,000 in her bank account, and then um, a couple months later had less than 10,000, which is concerning for Danielle. Um, and obviously I wanted to protect her because I love her and, and was there for her. Um, when I was in LA staying at Danny's house, um, we were out somewhere in Los Angeles at a mall, I believe, or getting lunch. Um, and her and her mom were in a big argument. Again, I was feeling very uncomfortable and um, felt put in the middle because Jin would text me, what is what is Danny doing? Danny would be, don't tell my mom anything. It made me feel very uncomfortable to say the least. Um, eventually, Danielle pulls me aside while we're out um, and tells me that she needs to talk to me and tells me her real age. Um, and says that if I need to you know, do business with her, I need to know her real age, blah, blah, blah. She tells me that she is 16 years old, um, to which, you know, w was concerning because we had had this conversation about when she turns 18, what is she going to do? So she told me that she is, is 16 uh, and had just turned 16 um, and asked me to speak to Jen so that 
we could get access to Danny's emails because at the time Jen was handling all of Danielle's brand deals and such. Um, so she had actually had me go in the room with her and her mom and I, I felt very uncomfortable. Uh, I, I kept saying, this is not my place. This is, you know, I'm here because Danielle has asked me to speak to you guys about this, to which Danny cried. I felt like a therapist more than a manager to say the least. Um, to add on, uh, I just wanted to kind of give some more context into some specific things. While I was in LA with, with Jen and, and Danny, and while I was in Florida, and we were filming the documentary during Florida, I had begun to notice a pattern of behavior that was really not healthy. Um, Jen saying things like, you should wear this bikini pic, or you should post this ass pic, or you should do this, essentially pimping out her daughter, and it made me feel very uncomfortable. I think Danny would look so cute with a nose stud. Yeah, that would be cute. But she won't do it. I already have like 12 piercings on my ears. Like I literally have four and then a cartilage. She went to get her, her, her tongue pierced with Desiree. They were supposed to be matching. And then yeah, she wanted she to get her. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Is she I got, got her cartilage. When I got first. my industrial done, the lady said that, because um, I was ready, remember? I went up mm -hmm. there and I was like, oh yeah, let's get mine done now. And she was like, no, like I don't think it's a good idea. There were times in which she would say, oh, if you wouldn't have aborted your daughter, you would be on 16 and pregnant. Um, I felt very, very uncomfortable. Jin would get phone calls and scream. Uh, I think we have a clip of Jin literally screaming about a lawsuit that they were getting. Tell me what is going on? How can you sue me for 100K? Um, and while I was having fun in the beginning, it became very dark and very clear that, that Jin was abusing her daughter. Danielle, which made me very concerned uh, and was a cause of action for me talking to Danielle about it and, and the reason she asked me to take over her emails and, and help out in a way so that, that Jen did not have that authority. I was concerned before I knew Danielle's real age that she was going to turn 18 next year and have nothing to her name because her mother had taken it all um, and I wanted to help her, you know, establish and protect herself. Jen had been telling me that they had 30 CPS cases, all of which I now know why, um, and it, rightfully so. Jen, what you were doing to your daughter is not okay. Um, it, if you guys are their fans, you should not allow Danielle to be treated that way by her mother, and it, it's despicable the way that you could treat your own daughter, Jen. Um, I've spoken to you about this privately, and nothing has yet to change. So I left LA immediately, returned to Nashville on July 4th, um, and spoke to my attorney um, and just kind of filled him in on everything and asked, you know, what to do after learning that Danielle was 16, which for the record, Danielle's not 16. We've pulled up her birth certificate and she's 15. So whether she's 15 or 16, uh, she's a minor. And that concerned things when um, she was no longer about to be 18 and her relationship with Mason had, you know, created some issues. Mason had gotten stopped on the way um, to Nashville for bringing a butterfly knife on a plane in which I actually got him out of that charge and had my attorney take care of it. Um, and the first thing I did when I got to Nashville after the fourth was, was call my attorney. He advised me to distance myself from Danielle. Um, he said that Mason should stop seeing Danielle and furthermore Mason should have no contact with her and definitely not a sexual or romantic relationship with a child as this is statutory rape um i informed mason of this and you know nothing seemed to change even though he said oh my gosh that's crazy um you know whatever i felt like i was obligated to tell mason the truth and and you know tell him what happened danielle has still not told mason her age um and you know that's where i i informed mason and then Danielle continues to call me and says she's coming to Nashville to surprise Mason. Um, she arrived in Nashville with Jen and it was very strange to say the least. I felt rather disrespected and very uncomfortable as my house was completely under construction for renovations and I felt isolated in my own home and it was strange for Jen to, to be there. Um, it, was, it was just strange in general, but she really wanted to surprise Mason. Um, and 
I had made us dinner reservations while they were in town. We go to the mall and I discover that Danielle had lied to me about being signed to Michelle Paramore. Um, and she actually had management at this time and that she could not sign with me, um, which clearly she had, she had lied to me about this and had coerced me into paying for everything in anticipation of us working together. Obviously I would not have paid for, you know, distribution and all of these other, you know, projects assuming that we were not able to have a working relationship. Um, and she had actually tried to get a creator that uh, we were working with signed to Michelle Paramore, which I found out about and confronted them. And they said, oh, we thought you knew. No, I never knew. Uh, and that definitely changed the dynamic as I had, you know, spent all this energy and effort and time into us working together. And Danielle was still not signed to me at this point and never was. Uh, and it, it just, it got weirder and weirder. So after that, uh, I felt very uncomfortable and ended up asking them to leave after I confronted Jen and, and Danny about what was going on. Um, and they actually go and get a hotel in Nashville. Um, and Mason goes there. Um, they end up leaving Nashville. Uh, during the same time, Mason actually buys me these Cartier earrings, um, which I... It, it was my birthday around that time, so I think he had just gotten that as like a birthday gift, as well as saying thank you for getting him off of a charge and, and you know, paying for the legal fees and everything else involved with that. Um, Danielle gets upset and makes her friend Kano post a TikTok that says managers, along the lines of like managers stealing my best friend's boyfriend, referring to me taking Mason from... Danielle. Which is not true, and we have no romantic relationship at all. Um, I instantly call Kano, and um, I've actually recorded the whole phone call, um, and explain to him what's going on, as well as how I felt strange by Danielle and, and, and Jen and, and felt very used and not okay. I was on the phone with Danny and Jen when I made it too. It's a draft that I had in my fucking TikTok. Yeah. And legit, I was like, haha, should I do this? It'd be funny. And Danny was like, yeah, do it. It's funny. And I said, okay, cool. Um, the whole situation started to make me feel really uncomfortable because that video was kind of meant to like shame Mason. Um, for the record, Danielle is not pansexual. She says she's pansexual all the time. Um, she has said the words that she would never date a girl and said multiple times that she would never date Mason or anyone else that was bi, um, which is offensive to say the least. And if, if Mason would have bought me this gift in a romantic way at all, not that he did, but if he would have, she would have gay shamed him and made him feel awful, um, even outing Mason and ultimately Mason got a call from his mother and was like, so you're buying boys earrings? Um, which is insane to me that you could even put someone that you love in that position. Um, so regardless, that just kind of amplified this, this weird energy. Um, while I was in LA, Jin asked me about um, YouTube and money and making money from from music videos and she had stated that she has never been paid for Marilyn Monroe or any of her other music um, and had actually asked me to claim them and so I submitted the claims which take a couple of days to process so you know it wasn't like we got into this fight or whatever but um, I submitted a the claims and obviously the way that works for those that don't know how MCNs work and how labels work and content claiming it basically went on her account in YouTube and says this video is copyrighted by Swerve Records or whatever. Uh, actually, I believe it said it's copyrighted by Vidya on behalf of Juice Crate Media Group and Swerve Records um, so that we could receive those funds or, or Danielle can receive those funds um, and get paid for her videos and her content out there. Um, you know, instantly they freak out and say that I've stolen the YouTube account. Um, which is, is not possible. Danielle actually added me as an owner to her YouTube channel. Um, she said that I forged her signature. I did not forge her signature. Danielle, when we created the first song, um, I'm Done, actually created her account with our label 
and our partnership with Vidya and connected her YouTube account and signed the agreement, which actually has the IP address to the Calabasas house. Um, so they signed this, this contract that pretty much said that we had the ability, not even we, Vidya had the ability to go in and claim content on her behalf to anything that's connected to her YouTube channel. Um, and a, a channel that's connected to this platform. Well, obviously she connected the platform to the channel herself. That's how we released I'm Done and her other music videos. Um, and you know, it, it's laughable to hear that she says I stole her account when I, she assigned me ownership of it and connected it to the platform herself. So it's, it's literally impossible. Um, the way AdSense works, it doesn't even go to me. Um, it's impossible to forge a signature to that platform. You have to agree to the terms and connect your channel, which she did, or, or Jen did. Um, and that's how we were able to even ingest the content. We wouldn't even have the content to claim if we didn't have that. Um, she connected her own YouTube channel and accepted video's agreement. And then, um, that, like I said, that IP address traces to Calabasas. Um, and long story short, she used this to say that I stole her money. Um, while the money that she's referring to sits in her video label account and her Swerve Records label account with only her having access to that, um, her being the login on that account, her or her mother, um, and she has yet to withdraw even any existing earnings from I'm Done or her other music videos. Uh, and the way AdSense works is it pays out to that account um, and the way our relationship with video works, it pays out to that account so that there's no employees touching the funds. It goes to a holding account, which I've attached screenshots here. Um, and Danielle has full access to that and only access to that. I can't go in there and withdraw her money. It sits there until she gets it. So she claims I stole her money, but that's literally impossible to do. She claims that I forged her name, which is impossible to do. She connected her YouTube channel and agreed to the terms and conditions. She said, I stole her account. Again, impossible to do. Um, after this, I start to get emails from um, brands and, and partners with us who are like, you know, what's going on? Um, all to say, Jen has reached out to another MCN and her management, Paramore and Michelle Paramore, and said that I, um, I'm in violation and I was like, no, I, this is what she asked us to do. This is news to me. Um, and I was very confused to say the least. Um, Danielle, I had texted multiple times through this to try to get some, some clarity. She refused to respond to me for whatever reason. Um, and ultimately that, that forced me to be in a very delicate situation with a lot of partners we've worked with for years. Um, I had to refund a brand deal that Danielle had, was supposed to do, committed to do, agreed to do, and um, wouldn't even respond to me to film the video. Needed, she doesn't understand, you know, quite like all of that stuff, like taking brain nails and then saying, yeah, I'm gonna do this, but then puts it all on me. Um, so when they come back, they don't come back and yell at her, they'll come back and yell at me because she's like, yeah, I'll do it, you know? And it's hard to get her to do stuff, like you can't, the thing with Danny is you can't tell her what to do. She's going to do it when she wants and at her time. So brands tell her, hey, I need this in a week, and she won't get it done. She'll wait like two weeks, three weeks, and then they're coming at me, yelling at me. And, well, can you make her do it? So taking on brands can be a little hard if it's something that she doesn't look at the whole contract first. So I had to refund that brand. I had a Netflix offer in the works um, and she refused to respond to that. Partners that I've worked with for years, um, she just refused to even contact me to, to, to resolve them. So there was no way for me to know anything that, you know, what she was doing. Um, but she refused to promote her music or her merch. Um, which would have allowed me to at least make a cut of the money that I had spent on them, even if I couldn't, you know, sign Danielle and offer her brand deals or whatever. Um, if she would have promoted her music and it got views, I would have gotten a small percentage in royalties um, as well as merch. And she actually removed her merch from uh, social media and her YouTube channel. Um, mind you, Danielle still owes me $10,000 and uh, has never paid, well, actually more than $10,000, and has never paid me to this day to executive produce her music videos, nor Carlos, our photographer, who's shot her content. Um, she has yet to pay those invoices that are outstanding. Um, 
it felt very strange to me um, and, and a little disrespectful that on top of me spending all this money, I even got Danny's, she didn't even have a Facebook page. I got Danny's Facebook page verified and set up. She didn't have a website. I set up her website for free, didn't charge her to build the website. Um, they don't even, they haven't even paid their monthly hosting fees. Like they have not done anything that they were supposed to do to say the least. Um, and it feels very disrespectful for her to be posting videos saying that I did all of these things when I was literally just trying to help this girl. Um, kind of backing back up, a couple days later after I received an email that I had stolen her YouTube channel um, and saw Danielle post her video, Mason sends me a letter asking me to unsign um, him when it had no grounds, um, no cause to action, nothing that made any sense. Um, and I was very shocked by this as well. It felt like Danielle had caused Mason to unsign with me, who was already exclusively signed in a two-year agreement. Um, I had paid all of Mason's legal fees. I stopped his arrest in California. I helped him out of a deal when he was being extorted six hours prior to his letter. I had gone above, above and beyond, so this was very blindsiding to say the least. Um, every time I asked him and, and informed him that my legal team told him to stop any romantic or sexual relationships with a minor, um, he would get backlash being like, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe I can ask her about her real age to which I had no information other than that. Um, and it became a situation where I could not be in between two parties where Mason is knowingly committing a crime, um, by being with Danielle, who is a minor and Danielle using my business relationship for her pure advantage and for her financial gain. Currently, Danielle has my property at her Calabasas home. Um, she has Mason's property and another client of mine, and she has refused to return our belongings and has made no arrangements to return anything. Um, even though the California law says you have five days, she still has not returned our property. Danielle then proceeds to post defamatory statements about me online. Um, she has gone out of her way to text clients of mine being like, don't work with Michael, uh, and has gone on an active campaign to tarnish my name. She has posted this YouTube video that is slanderous um, and, again, laughable. Um, she has had a group of people repost, a former employee of mine who's under contract, um, repost her defamatory statements, who she's had him text, it's my belief that she's had him text current clients of mine being like, don't work with Michael, listen to Danny, Danny's right. Um, and because of that, it, it's now affecting my business. I do not understand why Danny wants to post these defamatory statements about me when I've done nothing but help her. My belief is that Jen has frankly brainwashed her into believing these things. But if you look at all the evidence, I did nothing but try to help her. I was literally trying to get her paid for her music videos that she never got paid from before, according to Jen, which perhaps Jen has been getting paid all along. And when I made those claims, she was upset because that money was going to go to Danny and not her. I don't know. Um, and Danny's family is aware of this to a certain extent. Her uncle, who she referenced in the YouTube video, uh, I spoke to him about a lot of this and said that I felt very uncomfortable. And he was like, yeah, I do too. That's why I'm here to protect Danielle. Um, at this point, I, I can no longer stay silent and listen to someone try to destroy me when I've done nothing but help them out and gone above and beyond spending my own money and even getting involved in their personal lives and, and helping Danielle and Jen. And I cannot stay silent anymore and listen to what people say when it's not true. Um, I have a right to defend my name and... I plan to, and I have reached out to Jen and Danny and Mason with um, legal proceedings. My attorneys reached out multiple times. Again, no response. Um, I encourage Danielle, Jen, and Mason to reach out to my attorney, who has attempted to contact them multiple times, uh, and resolve this peacefully. It, it, you know, I think that. Ultimately, Danielle was like a little sister to me and I, I wanted to help her and protect her. Um, Mason was like a brother whom I 
did everything outside of, of what a manager even should do. I shouldn't have to pay for legal fees. I shouldn't have to pay for all of these things to protect him um, and get such a level of, of disrespect that is not only hurtful, um, but slanderous to my brand. And it affects my current clients whom, you know, have to deal with a lot of these things. I know throughout some of the past controversies in my career, throughout Dr. Phil, throughout TanaCon, throughout um, other legal proceedings in the past, I've remained silent, um, but I'm, I'm no longer willing to do that. Uh, I think it's time that people be held accountable for their actions. Um, I was surely held accountable, and I think the same should be done. Danielle, there are consequences to your actions. Jin, there are consequences to your actions.